Okay, it is officially time to extol the virtues of Anki. Bro, I think that's like probably the worst way to open this video. No one knows what Anki is. Come on, you guys gotta know this stuff. Fine, let's try again. It's the time you've all been waiting for. The time for me to teach you how to memorize the thickest of books, the holiest of trinities, and this beautiful biology bible. That's right. You can even memorize this using the tricks I'm going to teach you today. Like, who would not want to memorize a book as massive as this one? Come on. Hello everybody, I'm Karar, and today we're going to be talking about Anki, which is a flashcard app that I use to memorize the biggest books in the universe. This is especially useful if you're interested in Usable, because you had to memorize that really nasty textbook I just showed right there. And yeah, like, it basically makes it way easier to memorize all kinds of stuff. So before we jump into like the setup and everything, let's first talk about what it's used for. So, of course, you got Usable, because you got to memorize a lot of stuff. Other thing you could use it for is like Quizable and Science Bowl, because you got to memorize a ton of volume and breadth of stuff. So a lot of quizable players use it as well. If you have to like do SAT bio, AP bio, SAT chemistry, like AP chem, I don't know, anything that like is a massive amount of information on a single test, Anki is pretty good because it spaces out your review sessions basically. So essentially, Anki is a perfect way to memorize basically anything and it doesn't let you forget because it forces you to review them every single day. It's pretty cool. So let us jump into the setup. The setup's going to be epic. So of course, the first thing you gotta do to set it up is to download Anki. So you just search up Anki, download, and then you go to the first link, as you might expect, and you click download. Wow, I wonder how you download something. You just click, okay, okay it took us to another thing. God dang it, and then you click download. Add it. Hopefully you guys know what to do with an exe file, but just in case you don't, I'll show you how to install it using an exe file. Okay, so you click on the exe file, and then let's see what happens. And then you click install, like wow, this is crazy stuff. So the, basically the reason why Anki is super powerful is because not only does it set a review schedule for you, unlike Quizlet, which just makes you review the whole thing at once, and it also gives you a lot of options. Like you could put LaTeX equations in there, you could record your voice, you could put images in your flashcards, you could do a lot of different types of flashcards, and Anki supports all that nonsense. There's also add-ons and everything, so it's pretty cool. So you can even put Pokemon in it, it's pretty epic. And then you click close, and then you go to your thing and type Anki. Epic. So, this over here is Anki. And because I already installed it for like a previous video, and then I uninstalled it again so I can show you how to install it, but like the decks don't get deleted once you uninstall it, so that's pretty cool. So basically, you always come with the default deck. So once you open Anki for the first time, you'll have a deck. And basically what Anki does is it divides it into decks, and within each deck you can make cards, which are basically flashcards. So, I've heard from a lot of Quizbowl players, one of my friends is like, really good at Quizbowl, and he basically said not to use the default deck, so that you could have more control over what you do. Because the default deck is like, has its own settings, you can't delete it, all that good stuff. So, we're going to make our own deck. So first thing you got to do, create deck, and because I'm the kind of guy who does science, we're going to make a Quizbowl science deck. Now, not to flex or anything, but in my actual account, I have like 6,000 cards, okay? Look at that flex. So much flex. I'm so good at flexing. Okay, sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. But yeah, okay. So, you made a deck, and then what you want to do is basically you click on the deck, and then you want to add stuff to it. What do you do when you want to add stuff? You click the add button. That's right. So, you click add. It says it's going into the deck. Quiz both signs over here, and the type is closed. Now, let's first... I, I think close is a bad thing to start off the, the tutorial with, so let's start with basic. So basically it's just like your normal flashcard, right? You have a front, you have a back, and whenever you review it, it'll show you the front. Yeah, you, you think in your head what the answer is, then it'll show you the back. So let us say, what's an epic science terminology thing? Campbell biology. And what do you think when you think of Campbell biology? That's right, you think the bane of my existence because bio is just too hard. There we go. That is exactly what you should associate with Campbell Biology. And basically, before we add it, we have like a bunch of options here. We could format it, there's a lot of formatting options. You could attach a file or image. You could record your voice. And then you can add all this stuff. I do not have LaTeX downloaded on my computer, so I don't think it will be able to compile it. But there's also HTML, so there's like a lot of different things you could do with your formatting. So let's just add it and see what happens. All right. So you click close on the add thing and now basically it takes you to this. So you click study now and boom, it shows you your flashcards of the front side. And what do we say it associates with? We say it associates with, bro, I forgot. No, I'm kidding. I didn't forget. So you click show answer and 
basically, when you click space, it shows the answer, or you just click at the button, button on the bottom, but basically, it shows you the answer, and at the bottom, look, there's three options. Again, good, or easy. So, if it was just, like, really hard, and you, like, didn't know what the answer was, then you click again, and it would show it to you in a minute, so that you would have to review. If it was, like, decently hard, but, like, you still got it, then you say good, and I'll show it to you again in 10 minutes, just to make sure you don't forget it again. And then... Easy means it was super easy for you, it'll just show to you in 4 days, so you don't need to memorize it right now. So, for us that was pretty easy, I don't, I don't need to see this card again, I obviously know what it is, so we're just going to click 3, or easy. You can either do 3 on your, num on your keyboard, or just click easy here. Okay, let's test out the other options. So, basically there's basic, then there's a basic and reverse card. So, let's try that, and basically there's a front and back, but it also puts puts the front and back and puts that in your deck too. So if we try it like the same thing, like we add it to the deck. Okay, let's close it. And see it added two. So now it added both the front to back and the back to front. So the first one's gonna show us Campo Biology. We associate it that with being the bane of our existence. Then we click space, boom. Easy. And then it shows us the bane of my existence of bio too hard, obviously. This man right here. So Campo Biology, wow, so easy. So now we click three, boom. Okay, what else? We got optional reverse card. So basically, same thing here. I'm too lazy to type out the whole thing. And then if you type something in the add reverse thing, it makes both cards. But if you don't type anything in the add reverse thing, it'll only put one of them. So this is useful if you don't want to keep changing your settings up here. This is kind of useful. But the thing that I like to use the most is the close. But we're not there yet. Let's go with the base. Okay, forgot. We got, we got, we got, we got, we got. Whoops, totally forgot about the type in the answer. Sorry, man. Didn't mean that. Okay, so let's try them out. So basically what the type in the answer does is, like, you put a front and a back, right? So it'll show you the front, and then you have to type in the back word for word. And if you get it wrong, it'll show red. If you get it right, it'll show green. Study now. So, being of your existence. So it basically shows which part was right and which part was wrong. And then... Based on what you got right and wrong, you can decide if I need to see it again, or whether it was easy or whatever. But I think it was too hard for us, so we gotta restart. What was it again? Oh, it's beta existence, not your existence. Okay, and then we get it right, and then we could choose easy. Alright, now, for the one that I love, my favorite version, is a close. So the reason why I like close so much is because it's basically all the other ones combined, except like the type and the answer one, and it's like very flexible. So basically, let's say that I want to make the normal flash card, right? Then let's say we just wanted to make a flash card. We select this, and then Control shift c And basically what that does is it hides this part. And then once we click the space bar, it shows us the part that was hidden. So this is basically the same as the normal flash card. Campbell Biology is equal to the front, and then this is the back. Let's say we wanted to do it both ways. Then we just do this. So what this means is you have a C1 and C2, right? So it'll make two flashcards. C1 will hide this and keep this showing. And then C2 will hide this because it's labeled C2 and it'll show this. So boom, now we have the reversible card. Let me just test it out for you guys. Close. Study now. See? First off, it hides it. And then you're like, oh, the beta of my existence. Epic. Easy. Then the next one, it shows the other side. Campbell Biology. Easy. But close is even more flexible than that because let's say you have like a really thick paragraph and you want to memorize that. Campbell Biology is the bane of my existence because bio is too hard and what's a random? Dictyostelium Discoidium. Dude, that's such a cool name. I wish I had the name of that slime mold. Basically, that's a slime mold that replicates stuff. No, I'm kidding. But it's kind of cool. It is a cool cellular slime mold. We can hide like a ton of different parts of this. So, we want, want to know what Dictyostelium Discoidium is. We hide this part first. Then we also hide this one because we also want to remember what the scientific name is. Then we also... Why is it the beta my business? We had to make sure we remember that. Come on. And then we actually had to remember what the name of the book is. So, we got to hide that at some point. And then you click add. And Epic, it made four, each one hiding a different part. And I know it sounds kind of stupid because, like, we're going to see them all one at a time and they're all going to tell you the answers to all the other ones. But at some point, when you, like, forget certain things, it'll spread it out because based on whether it was hard for you or not, it gives it to you at a different time. So eventually, you'll be reviewing all of them at different times and they won't be showing you the answers for the other ones. So for this one, it is a cellular slime mold. Epic. 
uh, Bane becomes Dictio Stone in Discordium. Oh wow, easy. And then the Bane of my existence because Bile is just too hard. And then Campo Biology. Cool. So basically, those are all the five different things that you could do on Anki, but I personally think that the best one is just Clothes, because you can do basically everything on Clothes. Okay, the way I use Anki right now is completely free, so the way I like to do it is I basically sync everything onto the online version, and then if I need to use it on my phone, I don't need to buy the app, I can just use the online version. The reason why the app is good, or like the reason I have to install this version instead of just using the web version, is because it's a lot easier to add cards on this. But if you're only reviewing cards, the web version works super well. So let us make an account on the web version and try to sync it. So you basically go to Onky Web about and you basically sign up. Parakarara at gmail.com. Parakarara at gmail. Oh, I'm like Oh, it's not gonna auto fill for me. So sad. And no, I'm not telling you my password. And then we go to the bottom. We click. I I totally read that. Continue and we'll verify our email. It's gonna be epic. Verify. Okay, so it's verified, it's completely active, and now what we want to do is we want to sync it with our desktop version. So if we look at our decks right now, like, we don't have our anything. We basically can't look at anything inside the deck or anything like that. We browse on here, let's see. No, we can't even... Yeah, the problem with the web version is that you can't really edit anything, but, like, it makes it easy to review. So if I want to pair it up with the online version, I click sync, and then I'll put in my Anki web idea, which is basically just my um, email address. And then I'll put my password, and then we should be Gucci. But basically, we don't want to download from OnkyWeb because we just made our account, there's nothing there. So we'll just click upload to OnkyWeb, should be Gucci. Okay, successfully uploaded. Cool. So now we refresh this, and boom, we have our quizable science deck. And then if you want to access it on your phone, you basically just go to OnkyWeb and log in there. Now, because I don't have any cards on this new account that I just made, I will show you my actual account, and then it'll be kind of cool. So this here is my actual account. I have it on a computer, but I click sync and it goes up to here. And so you have like 150 cards per view, 40 that are new. And if I want to review it online, I literally just click here, click study now, and then boom, you can just study it here. Same shortcut, space three, space one, space whatever. And you can do that pretty fast. It also works on your phone. You don't even need to get the app. Let me show you. So see, if I go to the same URL on my Chrome on my phone, basically I could see all the same things. I click on quizable signs and then study now and it works perfectly fine show answer hooray that was kind of hard I have no idea what that is all that nonsense is okay we can show the next one what is the answer actually okay this is like hemi desmosomes right okay very cool good so yeah you basically get the idea now one more fun thing we could do do I want to show you this this is gonna be epic wait first off first off if you want to edit cards that you've already made just click browse it shows you everything you go to current deck you go to default you go to your deck and see you can see all the cards that you made and when you have to review them but there's a lot of other like things you could use on Anki but these are basically all the things that I use and then if you want to see what you've done stats which is kind of yucky right now kind of lackluster not gonna lie because we didn't do anything on this guy but last thing that's fun okay we're gonna make this a Pokemon game okay so basically what you want to do is you want to go to tools add-ons get add-ons and then you put in this code right here I'll put it in the description don't worry Click OK, downloaded, very epic. Okay, so it downloaded and then it says restart Anki, so I'll do that. And then whenever you close it, it syncs it automatically. And then we'll open it up again. And basically, we go to stats and we'll. And it says, choose a deck for your starter Pokemon. So basically, what I downloaded just now is called Pokemanki. And basically, what it does is it gives you Pokemon for doing reviewing your card. So I know nothing about Pokemon, but hopefully, it'll motivate you guys. Who knows? It's kind of fun though, not gonna lie. Oh my god, hey, let's go, we get a Bulbasaur, let's go, Bulbasaur. Bulbasaur is way better than Charmander, who cares about dragons? Wait, what, how did they get a level, what? Level 100? Wait a minute, what? Bro, on my actual account, I have like level 36 and I actually reviews them. <laughs> Bro, okay. But anyway, the point is, like, when you review, it levels up your Pokemon, whenever you make a new deck, it gives you a new Pokemon, kind of cool. <laughs> That's so stupid, what? I tried so hard on my actual deck and I only have like a Charmander level 62. Bro, no, Charizard level 62. But bro, what the heck? <laughs> okay. Okay. Sure. There's like a ton of random options here, but I don't know what they do. I don't know how Pokemon works. But anyways, yeah, that's how you use Anki. It's a super powerful tool. It basically helps you me memorize everything. Like you can see from my actual deck, right? I had a Quibble Mythology, Quibble Science. So yeah, very epic. Alrighty.
I hope this was helpful. I know that like Anki is super useful for me personally. Let me know if you guys want more tutorials like this on tools that I use to help me study for stuff. Thank you guys for watching. As always, if you enjoyed the video, leave a like and subscribe for more. Thank you guys for watching again and see you guys next time.